I mean, it's very unusual for uh, a, a guy to just lose his skills overnight, right? I mean, think about him in spring training and how hot he was at the end of spring training and how out of sync he looks right now. And I think I mentioned this to you last week, Mike. Um, we just You just didn't see signs that his skills had eroded to that degree, and it, it, it wouldn't happen in two weeks, would it? So I, I don't know what's up. But it, it's certainly something that is a concern because, you know, they haven't been able to trade him because he wouldn't go. Now that he's thinking about it and they're thinking about it, he might not be tradable. Be right out of the Philly scrapbook, wouldn't it? It sure would. And, and you know, Utley's a guy who, for the most part, has been steady the last couple of years. But, you know, he was going from a guy who was hitting 25 to 30 home runs down to the teens. And, you're wondering if you're now seeing the next drop off from the teens to a guy who's hitting in the tens or something, and, and that would be a big drop off for the money that he is still owed. And that's why we asked: Are teams going to say, you know what? That's a lot of money to pay for a guy who right now isn't displaying that he is near the same player that he was. Well, well right, exactly. And you know, um, I've maintained now for several years that he plays too much. He'd be a better player if he played less. And I'll just tell you about a conversation I had with the Pirates uh, people this spring. They're maybe the most thoughtful team in baseball, right? They, they, they're they always looking for ways to utilize information and trends in all sports. And um, it was I, I was in a group of guys talking to Clint Hurdle, their manager, and one of them asked a really innocent question about whether he wanted to rest Andrew McCutcheon more this season. Andrew McCutcheon, of course, uh, you know, significantly younger than Chase. And he started talking about an article that he read about the Golden State Warriors and how their players are playing less, but they're playing better. And so when I actually started poking around about this, it turned out it's not like he read this on ESPN.com. They would actually started studying all the great teams in all sports to, to, to look for trends. And, you know, the Warriors have made a determination that players play better when they're better rested. And, you know, this is something that, this is a memo the Phillies never got. You know, going back to the, the Charlie Manuel years, <laughs> their best players have played way too much. And especially when those guys start to get to this age, it's really time to think about how much Chase Utley should be playing. Jason Starks with us, ESPN.com senior baseball writer, how about Cole Hamels? Is it getting to the point now where he may be knocking on some doors and saying, hey, any news up here? Anything uh, anything new for me? Because he, he obviously looks frustrated, and it seems that each week that we have a discussion, it, it will be closer and closer. But is there any sign that he is ready and, and wants to get out of there sooner before later? Well, it's written all over his face. And even though he's been very careful in everything that he said, since that interview with USA Today, um, I, I think it's safe to say that's what he really felt, and everything that you've read so far is just spin, or since then is just spin. And, you know, it's a combination of things, Mike. Um, I mean, one is he has led after one inning all season, and so it's he never gets himself in a situation where <laughs> they get him a lead and he can then control a game and close out a game, never gets that chance. So that's a really difficult way to pitch. Uh, then you, you look around the field at the guys playing behind him. Think about the defense that used to be played behind him back in the glory years versus what it looks like now. I mean, that game he pitched the other night, you know, that's a game unlike anything anybody's seen in any town for 40 years. There hadn't been a game where teams scored six runs but only had one RBI <laughs> since the 75 Mets. Wow. And then Cole Hamels is pitching in this sort of situation. Now, he committed one of the errors, so some of this is, is him, but that's a big part of it. And then the other part of it is he hasn't – I mentioned this last week. He just hasn't been as good. Uh, he can't get his fastball down. He can't command it down the zone. Every home run he's allowed has been off the fastball. Uh, the slugging percentage against his fastball this year – is over 700. It's 750. And so, you know, it's just been the, the imperfect storm of, of all these circumstances, and he's just wearing that frustration every time he goes out there. 
Jason Stark is uh, driven by Team Nissan here on the Sports Bash 97.3 ESPN, the spot where the checkered flag drops on Delcy Drives. All right, Jay, Papelbon last night, it was almost as if the Phillies went to Comcast and said, hey, can we remake this guy's image? Can you sit him down and let us put him in this chair? And he's going to say something really appropriate here because I thought he came off pretty good last night, if you ask me. He says, I want to continue to be here if it's going to work, but, yeah, I'll be disappointed. But it at least made him not sound like he was such a bad guy or such a problem. So any thought that Papelbon now could be a name that is more prevalent? Well, as the dollars on that contract shrink, he becomes more tradable. Right? And they, sh- they shrink every week. So that's the good news. And I do think that there's been a conscious effort uh, from Philly's management to try to emphasize all the good things about this guy. And, I mean, there, look, there have been some good things about him. He's performed. Um, I don't think he's been quite what you thought he would be going into the contract because, uh, you know, his, velocity, his fastball velocity has declined so much. But he's completely reinvented himself. And he has really tried hard to be a mentor to some of these young relievers, the guys that are interested in what he thinks. I, I mean, I think at times his, his opinions are unconventional, but that's a whole other story. So they're, they're trying their best to market him. Um, but, you know, again, the truth comes out when he says, if we're going to lose, I'd be really disappointed if I'm here. And, uh, I mean, that, he's a very honest man. Uh, that has been a problem at times, but, you know, it's not really our problem, man. We get to hear the truth, and <laughs> we don't get to hear enough of it in sports. Yeah, you know, I thought he came up pretty contrite last night. Hey, I, I would be disappointed, but that's only if we don't get it done here. And and at least, you know, he was real, – and he did say he had no regrets of signing here. Obviously, that money would was probably a big reason why he decided that this was a good spot for him. But it hasn't gone the way that he had hoped here. We're talking with Jason Stark. How about the other day, and let's talk about what's going on with the 2015 Phillies and Sean O'Sullivan, which Lord knows why he's even pitching to begin with. Now he's not even able to make his start, and they got to go with a bullpen game. What is that? How does that happen? Well, it's just a commentary on the lack of depth that really hard to fathom. I mean, it's hard for other teams to fathom. I mean, when when he made the rotation in the first place, he should hear some of the stuff that other teams say. But all right, and then all right, he goes down and there's nobody to call up and they don't even know next week what they're doing. Um they it's clear that they don't want to add a non roster guy. Like uh you know, his spot in the rotation, um, you would think ordinarily would be filled by a guy pitching that day in triple A, right? Well that's Paul Clemens was an uh, uh, a non roster free agent who's in Lehigh Valley, and they clearly didn't want to give him that start. Uh, Joel Rodriguez is a guy they like, and he is on the roster. Uh, He pitches tonight, uh, so maybe if if you see him go out there and maybe pitch two innings, you'll know that he's on the radar screen. But, I mean, it's a real problem. They're just not legitimate players to call up when guys go down because there's so little depth. And it's, it's just stunning to me and to a lot of people in baseball that the, uh, the, just the roster composition of this team. Yeah, I mean, you, you nailed it too. How Sean O'Sullivan was even the first choice is, is uh, almost mind-boggling. What about Chad Billingsley? Is there any hope that uh, he's on the way or that he will be able to handle it? I mean, he hasn't pitched in a couple of years. Yeah, well, he, I, you know, he's doing well. I, you know, he missed two years. And so that's good news, bad news. The good news is when you've had Tommy John surgery, it's the guys who rush back who have issues. You know, and the fact that you know, he had a second he had a second thing crop up that caused him to basically miss all of last year means he's on a better, more reliable track to come back from Tommy John than most pitchers. And he's doing well. Um, so he will pitch Saturday night for Lehigh Valley. He should pitch uh, the end of next week and then would be on track to come back and pitch in Philadelphia in about two weeks. So that, I mean, you should watch for that because then you'll at least have a legitimate major league starter. But 
You know, they, it's like they've been – they've acted like the games in between don't count. And I guess in some ways <laughs> they don't really count because we know where this team's headed, and it's not to the playoffs. Not anytime soon. But uh, let's talk about some of the guys who could be part of that. Adubel Herrera, Ashy Galvis, a couple young players, some bright spots so far. What are we seeing from them in the early stages of the season? Well, Freddie Galvis has really remade his swing. You know, he uh, he he took to heart the Larry Boa advice. Here's how I did it. I used a bigger bat. I shortened my stroke. And, you know, you're seeing that. Uh, Freddie Galvis, for everything you might say about him and, and his his history as an offensive player, it's obvious he has great baseball instincts. And so you're seeing him now use them on the offset, offensive side of things. Uh, his stroke is much shorter, and he's leading this team in hitting. You never would have seen that coming, right? And then Odubo Herrera, uh, look, the defense obviously is a work in project, uh, progress. He's played so little center field that every once in a while you get routes like you saw the other night. Uh, it kind of reminded me of those minor league games you go to where they, you know, they, they spin people around and blindfold them, and then they, you know, they try to walk a straight <laughs> line. That was that was pretty crazy route. But as an offensive player. Uh, this guy's really talented, and uh, you know he's got a chance. There's a chance he could be the one guy standing from this roster when they're good. He's he's young and he's hard to defend. He can hit, uh, and then Cody Ashy's done a really good job of remaking his approach too. Uh, I, I had somebody say to me he reminds me more of Chase Utley right now than Chase does, and I think that's true. Jay, uh, Franco's obviously tearing it up down there. Howard really struggling. I know we've talked before they don't want to embarrass him, but at what point do you say, look, this kid just can't be blocked anymore. we got to do something. Is that close or not as close as we maybe hope? Mike, I'll be honest. I don't have any indication that it's close. Now, I mean, something that's interesting is that, you know, his date to become a 10-5 and five man um, – meaning 10 years in the big leagues, at least five of them with one team, that's going to arrive in the next week or so. And after that date goes by, he could then veto any deal. Now, in, in some ways, again, like I said with Chase, it's a moot point because they don't have any deals. <laughs> but <laughs> after that date goes by, he controls what they do with him. And, uh, you know, more likely that, unless he were to really pick it up, that this is going to end with Ryan Howard getting released. And I don't know if that's going to happen next week or next month or next year or 10 years from now. I Look, he's a great dude. You want to see him do well. But he, he's he's up there swinging, really. You know, it's all arms. There's no legs. There's no there's no back leg in that, in that home run swing. And so he got one up in the air and went out the other night. But I... I don't know. Do you see it turning around? They're praying it does. But we've been hearing the same talk and the same wrestling with his future going on for a long time now, We're going back to the middle of last year. Yeah, and I mean, that Achilles injury was a couple of years ago now. So, I mean, everybody was trying to give him the benefit of the doubt. And look, I, I the criticism of Howard sometimes I think is a little overwhelming, but it, it doesn't appear that the bat speed's there anymore, much like we – you know, talked about with Utley earlier, just doesn't look like the same guy, doesn't look like that bat speed is there. And, you know, quite frankly, as you just said, unless he picks it up, the, I, it, it's got to be a tough decision for them what to do with him. I mean, it is almost like, to, to, to as you have mentioned in the past, to just release him would be such a tough thing. But you almost, at this point, you almost don't have a choice. How do you keep running him out there? Sorry for him. Yeah, I really do. I, 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 you know, I like him a lot personally. And, uh, you know, he he really has – he's been the same person um, from you know, reaching the major leagues to being an MVP to hitting 58 home runs to what he's gone through the last four years. I mean, I've had people in the organization say they couldn't believe the demeanor that he walked in the door with this spring considering all that had happened, you know, how, he, how they tried to trade him and the general manager said publicly that they'd be better off without him and, uh, all the stuff that went on with his family, and he's still the same guy. I give him a lot of credit for that, but he is not the same player. And so what do you do? Um, you know, it's one of those years that's really not leading anywhere anyway. So I guess it's, it's it's a situation where there's not that much to lose 
to hang on to him, see if he gets it going, and see if maybe he could put him in a better place. And it's not so embarrassing for everybody. But we just, you're just not seeing signs of it. Uh, the power is not there. Um, ball in the air. Every ball he hits is to the right side. Look at his spray chart sometime. And he's the easiest guy to defense in the big leagues. The shift is made to order for him because he can't hit a ball the other way on the ground. And, uh, you know, I I, I was doing a, 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 a session with our people at ESPN uh, in the last few days where we were, we were, they were trying to teach me how to use some of this in, these information systems that we have in place now. And, you know, so you, you go to Ryan Howard's heat map, which shows, you know, the areas in the strike zone where he, he, he hits the ball. And when, it, when, he, when he has a good average in a certain zone, you know, that, that's painted in red. Well, there was no red on his heat map. It was a cold map. You know, like the whole term didn't apply. It was <laughs> tough to watch. It is. And, and you know, I, I, I really feel for both, for both these guys to some extent, Utley included, because, I mean, that guy – has really given it his all, and you're just watching it really deteriorate. Pretty, much. it's almost sad to to see what is happening uh, to this team. And you turn it around, you look at the Mets, who were on the bottom, and we're getting laughed at by Phillies fans. And now it's reversed. Are the Mets sustainable right now? Thirteen and three, Jay. Are the Phillies fans going to have to take it now? Are the Mets uh, the real deal? <laughs> well, they're not going to win 150 in a row. I'm pretty sure that. Um, <laughs> They look like no matter what happens, they're going to win, right? That's kind of the, the, the ambiance they've got about them right now. They're not really this good. If you look at their raw numbers, it's pretty clear that, that they're not this good. But there's a couple things that you look at and you realize why this is happening. One is they're – they're and I, you know, when, I, when I saw them early in the year, it really hammered home to me that when you look at pitching when you, and you look at baseball and you try to analyze, right, who's going to win tonight? You always want to pick the team with the best pitching, right, on any given night. And most night, they win the pitching matchup. Uh, they're outperforming the Nationals rotation right now, better ERA, more strikeouts, fewer walks. Um, they're pitching great. So that is going to continue unless they get hurt, and they have tremendous pitching depth coming. So they can they can survive some, some stuff with their pitching staff. Um, the other – comment that you hear about them is, well, look who they've been playing. Um, the one good team they played was the Nationals, and they played them at a time when, you know, half the Nationals lineup was out. And then the, other than that, they played the Phillies and the Braves and the Marlins, and, and you know, the, those teams haven't been very good. But I, I, I'm going to point it out the other side of that equation. All those teams are in their division. I mean, they're going to play the Phillies, the Braves, and the Marlins 19 times each. That's 57 games this year. So if they can beat up on those teams, they're in great shape. And then the other thing, too, is think of the margin for error. An 11-game winning, if they just go 74 and 70 the rest of the way, wow. that's 90 wins, and they're a playoff team. So right now, you look at them, that's one of your wild card teams. Yeah, it looks like they're, uh, you know, they turned it around. And another team that's uh, surprising a little bit is the Braves, Jay. You look at what the Phillies are now, where the Braves look like they were going. When you look at the two organizations, how has Atlanta done it differently than what Philadelphia decided to do? It's really interesting to look at, Mike, because these are both two teams that decided to hit the reset button. And the Braves have done it completely the opposite of the Phillies. Uh, John Hart walked in there and replaced Frank Renwright. They changed general managers. And he had no emotional attachment to the guys on the field. And he's just done what he needed to do. They've made – he's made ten major trades since the end of last season. Ten. And so, look, they're, they know they're not going to be a playoff team this year. But you can see they have pitching. And now they've gone from one of the – the five worst farm systems in baseball to one of the five or six best and it, it's clear that within the next year or two they're going to contend again they're built to win in you know by the time they move into the new park in two years and yet you compare that to the phillies you know they've got so m much emotionally tied to the guys who won here 
And you, you can see just how difficult it has been for them to make that decision about every single guy. Ruiz, Hamels, Utley. You know, it's amazing they're all still here. Think how difficult it was for them to, to, to pull the trigger and trade Jimmy Rollins. And, you know, with every day they wait, you can see the dangers of doing that. You know, if Cole Hamels doesn't pitch any better than he's pitching now, what are you going to get for him? If Ryan Howard and Chase Utley and, hey, Ruiz, too, don't play any better than they're playing now, what are you going to get for him? It's a, it's a whole different approach. And, uh, you know, the, the Braves, you can't guarantee them anything, but at least they have a direction. The toughest thing about the Phillies right now is when you look around the field, there are so few guys who you can see are going to be here when they win. Uh, he's Jason Stark. He joins us every Friday here on the Sports Pass, driven by Team Nissan. The spot where the checkered flag drops, Delcy Drive and Violin. Check out all their new pre-owned inventory at TeamNissan.com. At Jason ST on Twitter for all the facts, figures, trivia, and more as the Phillies' sad state of affairs continues. But the Braves, the Mets, and uh, the Marlins and the Nationals, all see, although maybe not the Marlins so much, but uh, everything seems to be looking up in the division that the Phillies owned four years. Jason, we'll do it again next week, pal. Mike, have a great weekend, man. Thanks.